It's a disappointing loss because because I feel like our guys uh, play play with the maximum effort. I felt like we battled back. Like you know, our, our culture will will be of a team that that plays for 40 minutes and and doesn't quit and battles and digs and scraps and claws and gives themselves a chance to win every game. That's what we want. Um, I think that the biggest point for us today was, you know, just how we started the game. Um, you know, Allende, he makes a, a difference on our team just because he, he's a point guard. He gets in the paint and he gets other guys' shots. So now when we have to play extended minutes without him in the game, our offense suffers, obviously. Um, so, you know, he's a freshman, so he's going to learn, learn from his mistakes. But we need him on the floor. Um, because when he was on the floor, he helped everybody else, man. Like, you know, he was one for nine, but he had a plus 10, plus minus, because when he was in the game, our offense just had more flow, more pop. Um, and that's really, that's really him. Um, and, um, you know, we battled back. You know, tough, tough uh, play at the end. Uh, I thought we got a good look from Isaiah. Um, a shot that I think he'll make. You know, if he if he got that shot, you know, three more times, I think he'd probably make it two more out of the next three. Um, but uh, you know, disappointing loss. St. Louis is a is a tough team. I really admire how they play. I really admire um, their relentless, tenacious attitude. I, I really do. And um, and one day I want I want that to be us. I want us to have that that type of mindset, that type of attitude that type of culture. Um, and we're not far. We just got to keep, keep, keep getting better, keep staying focused on, you know, what we need to do to keep improving and, and you know, just be the best team that we can be by March. It's not our time. It's a process. And there, there are so many things that, that go on. And, um, and there are so many teaching points that we talk about every day in terms of building our culture, in terms of the preparation going into games. And, and I know that once we have all of the core values of our program intact, then we'll start winning. But we're not there yet. We're a young team. Um, we're, we're very much so, you know, still in the, in the building stages. And then you get in games like this, and, you know, it, it's, it's just like more valuable teaching points that we can use to learn from and grow from. But you know what? This is not our time yet. And when we deserve it, when we earn it, we'll get it. So we just got to keep working. No, I mean, our league is a gauntlet, man. You know what I'm saying? Like our, like St. Louis, St. Louis just played, what's Dayton rank? Number seven, they had the number 17 in the country beat, you know? Um, so, you know, this is a team last year that, that beat up on us, you know? And, and, and they got two all league players that, that, are, that are killers. And, and we're, we're still a young team. You know, we got, got a couple guys that are back from last year, but. You know, you know, we we're still we're still a very young and experienced team in terms of, you know, doing things our way, right? And at this level it's all about do you do what you do better than your opponent does what they do. And at the end of the day, we out rebounded St. Louis and that's what they do. We lost the game. But we beat St. Louis at what they did. And that was the point of emphasis going into the game. And that's why we had a chance to win it, you know? So, I mean, you know, you look at our, our last couple games, you know, it's, you know, St. Louis, VCU, Richmond, you know, Rhode Island. Like, these are all NCAA tournament teams. Last year, we didn't have those type of, uh, those type of teams in the Atlantic 10. It's a completely different league right now. So do you, like, look at your Ken Palm numbers and say, because you're up? Where, over where you were last year, like on the Ken Palm rankings and those mm -hmm. sort of advanced numbers, is that something that you can look at and at least take some solace in that there is some raw 
raw data that shows improvement, even if the record isn't quite the same? No, because the, those those numbers just reflect the teams that we play. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's be, it, the, the numbers are better because the teams in our league are better. You know? So us, like right now where we are, it's not about the numbers. It's about the culture. It's about the attitude. It's about the habits. And um, that's where we are. Isaiah played tough down the stretch, made a lot of tough layups. Um, unfortunately, missed a lot of shots. What do you say to him to keep his spirits up, to keep his head up, you know, going forward? I mean, Isaiah's a senior. You know what I mean? There's no more pep talks for that dude, man. If I gotta, if I gotta talk him up, then, then he's not the guy that I think he is. You know what I mean? You know, he's a senior. He's one of the best guards in our league. He's going to get back in the gym tomorrow, get his shots up, get his free throws, prepare for Duquesne. You mentioned you averaged down the same low as how many teams are able to do that. I mean, what was the plan with that? Was there a different strategy for you going into this? No, it's, it's, just, it's just a matter of knowing that we're playing against a team that wins games on the boards and just challenging our guys to step up. And Eddie Croswell had 18 rebounds today, 24 and 18. Um, and Ed is capable of that. And I'm not expecting to get 24 and 18 out of Ed every night, but I am expecting for him to perform like a guy that can compete with Hassan French because he's capable, right? And hopefully he can use this game as some momentum to, to move forward in, in the league and, and, and play well. Mm-hmm. Were there any temptation tonight to go a little deeper in the reserves, or were you just playing the eight? Honestly, we played everybody we had tonight. Um, you know, Jared Kimbrough's out, Sharif's out, Mustafa Diang's out. Um, so, you know, we, we, we went with the guys we had, and I felt like Christian Ray and Brandon Stone gave us some really good minutes midway through the, the second half when we were making a run. Um, and. Uh, you know, we just gotta we just gotta be ready to to have a next man up mentality, right? You know, just because you're down a couple bodies doesn't mean that that you that you you know you just pack it in. And and I think our guys are they they they're getting it. They're getting it. When when you when you're able to go to the bench and get quality minutes from guys that haven't been playing well, I think as a group, I think our guys are, are starting to get it. Um, we just got to get over the hump, man. We just got to keep working. And I think that when it clicks, it's going to click. I think we're dangerous. We're a very dangerous team. We just got to keep getting better. He's day to day. So um, um, I'm hoping that we get him back for Duquesne. Um, but, you know, our, our, our medical staff will let us know. And uh, we definitely won't rush him back too soon. size and size. And, yeah. uh, he did a good job playing without fouling. Was that something you specifically needed to say to him before tonight about how, hey, they, you guys really needed him on the court, or did he sort of come on that himself? Yes. Yes. And I think a big part of the reason why Eddie had the game he had was because he was out of foul trouble. He played, he played the whole game. Like, if you look at the last couple games, like, he's gotten two quick fouls here, two quick fouls there. Got to take him out. Now, you know, we're – we're, we're struggling inside because not only is he our best rebounder, but he gives us a low post scoring threat that makes it easier for the guys on the perimeter to get some looks. If we, you know, without him, then, you know, we're, we're trying to figure different ways out to manufacture points. Um, so, you know, having him on the floor for 38 minutes was, was clutch for us. I told him, man, if I, I told him today, I was like, Eddie, if I could play you 40 minutes, I would love to do that, you know? So, um, let's, Let's, let's hope that he's getting some rest tonight because we're going to need him again on Saturday. One last question from Coach. Just a little off topic here, but I want to get your thoughts in. I mean, you grew up around Philly basketball your whole life. You're about the same age, around the same age as Kobe. I mean, what has what what he meant for Philly basketball? I mean, he's the standard, man. He was our, he was our, he was our, uh, he was our poster child. You know, everybody who, it's from Philly, you know, loved him, admired him. Um, 
respected his work ethic, respected his desire, respected his body of work, respected his approach to the game, respected his, his professionalism, respected the fact that he was a great father, a great husband, respected the fact that you know, he was, a, he was a, a highly intelligent person that could be successful at anything he wanted to be successful at as evidence of his Oscar. Um, you know, uh, you know, so he was, he was, he was our, he was our poster child. He was our role model. He was our everything, man. You know, if you, if you wanted to create the perfect basketball player in terms of skill, athleticism, work ethic, mentality, it's Kobe Bryant. So, pardon me? Yep. No, no, the whole family. No, the whole family. Um, did you guys, as a team, did you, was it something, did you guys have a meeting about it? Did you have a, did you guys talk about it at all as a group? Or? So last night in our pregame, we, uh, we all went around and told our favorite Kobe story, you know? And, um, and, uh, and that was pretty cool. The young guys, you know, they, they talked about watching him as a kid and how he motivated them. And, you know, I think the, the, the older guys on our staff, myself, Horace Owens and, and Donnie, we, we reflected more about, you know, our time around Kobe when he was, you know, in, in high school and when he was a young kid coming here from Italy and, you know, just who he was back then and, and you know, just how cool it was to watch his evolution and, and um, to be able to see him grow into the icon that he is today.